Hi everyone, and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. Today I, uh, oh, my name is Gabriella Handel, and I'm a draftsman because I like to draw. And today I want to talk to you a little bit. It's actually the first of three videos that I want to make where I talk about making degradations of tone, kind of like this one that I did already here as a little warm up. Um, Sometimes people ask me how I do that, and I want to talk about that here. So the tools that I generally use for making tone and shadow are just pencil, a pointy pencil, or just, you know, a pencil, a blending stump, and a bristle brush for graphite and for charcoal. For graphite, I generally use soft bristle brush. And for, uh, for graphite, I use a soft bristle brush. And for charcoal, I use the stiffer, harder ones, like the really cheap ones that are where the, the bristle of the brushes are, are white. Uh, those. Those are the ones I u generally use for charcoal. Um, this, is, this one in particular, I use a lot. It's not any kind of special um, brush. This one, I brought this from Panama. You know, I um, don't know where this was made. I don't know what brand it is. Um, but anyway, the thing is that this very first video is going to be about pencil only. And then the other videos, the other two videos will be about these other tools and maybe about using them in conjunction with pencil. Okay, so we're going to start with just any pencil. It doesn't have to be any pencil in particular. It doesn't have to be a super fancy pencil. Um, it doesn't have to be an expensive pencil. You can make good degradations of tone or just any kind of tone with any kind of pencil. It doesn't matter. Okay, and you don't need any kind of special sharpening tool just as long as you can get any device that can sharpen your pencil. It can be a pencil sharpener, it can be uh, the emery board type thing, it can be the ones where you twist the pencil in, it can be a blade, it doesn't matter, okay? Uh, at least for this exercise and this practice and these uh, tips and stuff that I'm gonna give, that I'm gonna try to give you today, okay? And the other tool that I'm gonna use is a kneading eraser, all right? So, let's get started. I'm going to use this pencil. It's unlabeled because I removed the dumb things it had written on it, but I still like it because somehow they made the wood black too, and I think that's cool. I'm not going to sharpen it just yet, um, and I'm just going to start. I'm just going to start with. Um, just the tone any tone like that and as it is here I'm gonna try to fade it out smoothly and slowly there's no hurry and as I go in this direction I'm going to lighten the pressure that I apply on the pencil and I'm also holding it kind of farther back closer to where the eraser is so I'm gonna we're gonna start with this okay so one of the very first things that I do and I, I still haven't sharpened my pen my pencil um, using it sideways like this kind of sometimes sort of makes the point pointier but anyway, the first thing that I'm going to do, and kind of the way that I think of when I'm trying to smooth out uh, a tone, is filling in these little holes that you see here. And let me see if I can get closer with my camera phone. Okay, 
So these little holes that you see here, or I call them holes anyway, it's the very first thing that I'm going to do. The reason for which these happen is because, as you know, paper is a porous surface. And it is a porous surface because it's made out of fibers that are laid together and polished, flattened out. And then that's what we draw on, but it's not a flat surface. So then when you uh, run your pencil over it, the pencil passes over the fibers that are level with each other, and then the ones that are kind of like deeper, the pencil doesn't touch those. So then those are the holes, and so those are what I'm filling in. I made another video in the past where I was also calling it uh, bringing the marks closer to each other by adding more marks in between, something like that. And that, that also works. So what I'm doing right now is just filling in the holes that I see. And more or less matching the tone that I see around the area. So what one tries to do, what I try to do generally when I have a tone, a degradation of tone that goes from dark to light is to make the point of trans, you know, the point where the tone changes from one to the other as smooth as possible. But at this point in the beginning, just filling holes. And I think this is probably going to be the longest of the three videos. Because this definitely takes a little while. Whenever I use the other two tools that I showed you, the brush or the um, blending stump, I usually involve them if I want to speed up a little bit. So I'll put down a basic tone with either one and then kind of finish it off by hand. Uh, you know, finish off the rest with a pencil. So, yes, that's what we're doing right now. And as you get into the lighter area, you want to match. You want to try to match the marks that you make in there. The tone of the marks that you of the marks that you make in there. Okay, nice and slow, nice and soft. And um, I strongly suggest, well, you know, I'm not the real dad or anything, but I strongly suggest this just very thing as an exercise to practice the degrad degradation of tone. Because I think it's good to help train both your hand, meaning the pressure that you apply with your hand and your eye, so then your eye will, will also become better at judging whether the transition is smooth enough or not, or if it needs more work. So now what I'm doing is taking the kneading eraser and picking up the color that is too dark for the area that it's in, like this here. And it doesn't matter if it picks up the tone that's also correct because I can just put it down again, but it is important to remove those darker bits that don't belong in the area. And the 
spacer, of course, can be shaped into a point, which is very helpful. It can be uh, shaped into a point or a flat, both of which are very, very helpful for this stuff. Lots of times artists uh, will use just different grades of pencil for making shadows. Like, you know, if you want to make something really, really dark, you use like a 4B, for example. And if you want to work on the lit area of your drawing, use like an HB or something, you know, for example. However, I think it's worth working on this skill of being able to control the same, just the one pencil, to do an entire range of tone. And I am biased in favor of that, because that's just how I work. I don't like using more than one pencil per drawing. Uh, I don't like how they feel on top of each other, because the softer pencils, meaning the darker ones, uh, versus the harder ones or the lighter ones, um, they have different um, filler type stuff in the lead to make it harder and softer. And I don't like how they feel on top of each other. Also, they have different colors and I don't care for that. I don't care for seeing those different colors. Sometimes they're, ch uh, you know, one grade is shinier than the other. I don't like that either. Although shine can be mitigated if, you, if you're careful. But anyway, um, I definitely think it's worth, you know, even if you do use all of those pencils to make your tones and your drawings, I still think it's worth practicing the control of tone with one pencil. At a time, you know. So now that I removed all those dark little dots that did not belong here in this area, I'm going to go back and even out this part of the surface. Again, filling in little holes. And then at this point, I'm going to sharpen my pencil. Because uh, I want to... want it to fit into the small holes. So you can see right now that the, I mean, this division here is a line practically, right? So I definitely want to make that go away. So we're going to do that slowly and carefully. This one is definitely going to be the longer of the three videos. Um, and I wor when I work this way, I don't necessarily focus on, w on working on one area at a time. I kind of travel around. Because I think that also helps to make sure that uh, the way the tone kind of travels and changes is also 
uniform. So, yes. I don't worry too, too much about finishing off one area first. Because one area, also because one area has to be considered as part of the whole. So, I think it definitely also helps to kind of move around on the surface of what you're working on. I find this very calming and enjoyable, even if it takes a long time. But you know, for smaller drawings it's okay. Not a problem. So this division here is no longer as obvious. It's a little softer. And I'm not planning on speeding this up or anything. Not a time lapse video, this one. going to do now a little more of erasing those little dots with which are even smaller now Pretty glad I learned that my phone can record this close because I think it's the only way to show really how how to do this. Even if it's a little wobbly.
removed the dots that I think did not belong there. I'm kind of filling in again. more filling in of holes. I actually think the degradation of tone practice is really good, but also really good one is to uh, make an even tone on a surface. You know, you draw a square or a circle or whatever and you try to fill it in with one single tone and try to make make it as even as possible that's also you know using this method that's also really good practice both for your eye and your hand in conjunction with this um, this practice of degradation of tone And as you move to the lighter area, then obviously your touch must also be lighter. So holding farther away from the point of the pencil is helpful. But if you're trying to if you're trying to get into holes there, then having your Pencil tip be sideways is not helpful. So holding the pencil more upright but lightly and still far, you know, a little bit farther away from the pencil tip. 
ada sapu Sharpen my pencil again. And again, the sharpening device doesn't matter in this case. It's really just your preference, whatever is convenient for the moment. Going back to removing blemishes that I don't care for. This is looking pretty smooth. I also don't want this video to be ridiculously long. So I'm going to cut it off soon. But I think this is 
good demonstration of this method in which you know you the artist or whomever is wielding a pencil has a lot of control over a degradation of tone okay and well you can actually do something similar with other tools like a ballpoint pen uh, you obviously can't erase with that but you can just the same fill in holes and even out tone in other ways like that but yeah this one's gonna be the longest one because this takes a little while and this method of kind of because it's it's kind of layering too you know um but it also works for making dark tones just like in the same way <laughs> though not necessarily pressing super hard on your paper because you don't want to do that you don't want to go pressing really hard like this because you're gonna burnish your paper um, meaning that you're gonna flatten out the surface that is porous so if I, I don't know if the camera can catch this but you know this will usually be shiny um, I'm gonna try to show you so you can see that this is shiny anyway oh there that's shiny okay so you can avoid that by doing it this way. Um, you just layer it carefully. And kind of fill in more, sort of, you know. So you do it carefully with a light touch and a pointy pencil and filling in little holes and being patient. And then you might still have some shine but you're definitely gonna have less shine in this okay and well the other reason for which that ends up shining is because so you burnished the paper so meaning you flattened it out you flattened out the texture that it had from the fibers and remember that pencil leads have a uh, ceramic in them to harden the graphite and so you're rubbing that on the paper And uh, if you do it softly without pressing, then you're not flattening out the texture or rubbing the ceramic powder they put in there on the paper. Okay? So then you do it slowly like this. Now, I mean, since you're using graphite, it could, it, you know, it's still going to have, it, it could still have some shine to it. You know, but it's definitely not going to be as much as this, okay? And if it does have some shine and you want to get rid of, remember that you can also just spray fix with um, matte fixative, okay? So up here I made, you know, like above this that I had already made earlier, I made a slightly darker tone by just a little teeny bit, a little teeny bit more pressure, not really that much. But then, you know, you f fill in the holes again, matching the tone of this area here. But I'm not trying, like again, I'm not trying to make this video last forever. So hopefully you get the gist of how to do. You just apply the same things here as we did down here. You just take your kneading eraser and pick up excess graphite from where it doesn't belong. Fill it in again until it's nice and seamless. Okay? So hopefully you find this helpful. And the next video is going to be about the blending stump. Uh, let me know what you think about this. Let me know if you found it helpful. Let me know if you tried it.
Uh, and remember to like and share this video. Hopefully, you know, maybe somebody else who likes to draw with graphite finds this interesting and helpful for their own practice. And thank you very much and have a lovely day.